Android has come a long way when it comes to accessibility features, and it turns out some of those features are useful for everyone. I'm gonna show you next. Hands on Android is brought to you from LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure that they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether employees are working in the office or remotely. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. Hello everyone and welcome to Hands On Android. I'm Jason Howell. Today I thought I'd focus a little time on accessibility features. Uh, for a long time when it came to Android and accessibility, they didn't quite see eye to eye. It took Android quite a while to mature in the realm of really catering the functionality of the mobile OS to people who are maybe less able to operate the smartphone uh, when compared to the majority of smartphone users. Those accessibility features that they've baked in year after year have really elevated the ability of Android to truly reach and serve every user. Uh, but I've realized over time that there are certain features in the accessibility menu and the accessibility offerings that Google's put out that are just downright useful for everyone. So I'm going to focus on a few of those today and show you what you might be missing. Let's take a look. Now, this first one is just so awesome, it's hard to start with anything else. Live Caption was first introduced on Pixel phones last year. It's since rolled out to other Android phones as well. And the execution is super simple. You just press the volume button and you'll find a little live caption icon at the bottom with a slash through it. It defaults obviously to off. Uh, tap that, and from that point on, live caption is running. Now, what does that do? Any audio that is detected within your smartphone will be translated into text on your display in real time. It's all happening on device. None of it's being sent to the cloud. This also works with phone calls, by the way, so very handy there. The caption box that you see is movable. You just tap and drag it around so you can find the perfect place for it and move it out of the way of your content. It's also expandable, you might not know. You just double click that box and it makes it a lot larger. You can see a lot more text inside of it. Now there are settings to control what you see. You just go to settings, sound, and live caption. And here you can control things like how profanity is displayed, uh, what happens when live caption detects something like applause or laughter or music and Basically, I'll, I'll spoil it for you. It labels them as such. Uh, also, when a call is to be captioned, do you want to just ca automatically caption every call or do you want to be asked or not at all? I find live captions are super useful when I'm thumbing through my Twitter feed late at night, especially because it automatically captions any video that appears in my feed. Even if that video is muted, uh, I don't have to press play on the video. If it's playing, it picks up the audio and then gives me the text text on the display. Really cool. All right, next up, you may have heard about Assistant's recently rolled out feature that promises to read articles out loud to you. The problem is, in my opinion, it doesn't really work every time. It's kind of annoying. So here's a way to force it with a totally different approach. And granted, it's also not perfect, but it fills in the gaps. Go settings, accessibility, and the feature's called select to speak. And make sure and turn that on, of course, and you can give that a shortcut. I'm gonna go ahead with the two finger swipe up from the bottom of the phone. Also, I found that the default voice model is incredibly robotic and kind of grating. So go to, get ready for this, select to speak settings, text to speech settings, preferred engine settings, install voice data, and under English United States, just as an example, I have eight different voices to choose from. They're all a little robotic, but pick the one that doesn't make you hate life. Google could really do so much better here. Now let's jump to an article on The Verge. And of course my shortcut here is double finger swipe up from the bottom and I'm given these audio controls down at the bottom. Now I can either draw a portion on the screen with my fingers to play and it'll just play that area or I can hit the play button and it's gonna read aloud the content that's on the entire screen. So everything that you see. Um, the downside is, of course, I'm gonna to have to scroll down for the next part of this article. So it's not as much of a set it and forget it sort of thing. But if what you really want is for this article to be read to you and you can fit a lot of text on the screen, uh, it does work when the assistant feature doesn't. 
Next up, pinch to zoom. It's second nature, so why shouldn't it work on our smartphone UI? Go to settings, accessibility, magnification, and enable the magnification shortcut. Also, you can tap on magnification shortcut and assign one of three different shortcut methods to jumpstart that magnification mode. Two finger swipe up from the bottom, of course, but there's also press and hold both but, uh, volume buttons. And then there's a third option that adds some lag to your device, uh, but it allows you to triple tap the screen to summon magnification. I'm gonna go ahead and go with holding down both volume buttons. Now, when I do that, you'll see the border around my display suddenly turns orange. That's telling me that magnification mode is active and ready. Now, I just tap and hold on the display and instantly everything zooms in, it gets bigger. And I can swipe around with my finger pressed down and really investigate if I need to. I can even pinch to zoom and that brings me in tighter or looser on the image and then continue to kind of swipe around at that new zoom level, whatever I happen to set it at. Everything is zoomable with this shortcut that stays hidden until you really want it. So why not? All right, this next one is a quick one. Settings and then accessibility and you'll find a section called interaction controls with a few one tap settings that really kind of just change how your phone behaves. A few key ones here that I've found. Power button ends call. It's pretty self-explanatory, right? So when you're done with a phone call, you just tap the power button and that's gonna hang up on the person on the other end and it'll also turn your display off, kind of neat. Also, there's touch and hold delay, and this is related to the amount of time that it takes when you tap and hold on an item that you're interacting with in the OS. So for example, on the home screen, when you tap and hold on an icon, maybe you want to drag it around, uh, does it, with your tap and hold, does it instantly grab and you know it's movable immediately, or does it take a few seconds so that you don't inadvertently move an icon when you don't mean to? Uh, pretty handy there. Short, medium, and long are your options there. Setting it long, for example, makes the interaction much more of an intentional action. Finally, vibration and haptic strength. This tweaks the sheer power of your device haptics, so you definitely feel it when your phone is in your pocket. Or you can isolate an event and say, I don't want to be vibrated when this happens, but I do when that happens. And finally, this last one doesn't actually apply to the Pixel out of the box, but a lot of other phone manufacturers have this feature in the accessibility settings. You can see here the LG Wing, for example, has flash alerts in the accessibility hearing settings. The Galaxy Note 20 Ultra has flash notification in the accessibility advanced settings. Look for something along those lines in your device settings and if it supports it, great. If not, there's a bunch of apps that do this. But what does it do? This feature flashes the LED flash on your device when major events happen. So things like incoming calls, messages, alarms, all of them are gonna blink the flash on the back of the device. So think of this as an extra visual indicator of something important happening on your device, almost like a notification light on steroids. It also replicates a dance floor in a dark room, so make sure your do not disturb features are set up if you sleep next to your phone at night. Some honorable mentions, action blocks, which I don't feel like I really need to show you action blocks. I just spent a few episodes, uh, episode 38, I spent all on action blocks. That was made with accessibility in mind and totally useful for everyone. Sound amplifier, this is actually really cool. It, it allows you to put on headphones and put your phone somewhere where you need to hear where that phone is near and it reduces the uh, noise in the area and really isolates the sound so you hear just the person talking, for example really cool. And then live transcribe, which is just a way to use your phone as a, a transcription device. You just activate that, put it in the center of a discussion, and everything that is said is displayed on the screen. You can keep those transcripts for up to three days. Very cool features, worth checking out some of these other accessibility features to see if there's something in there that you know maybe you haven't gone towards because you see accessibility and you think something about those features just isn't for me. Well, guess what? There's a lot in there for everyone. Send me your emails, your tips, your tricks, whatever you got uh, at hoa at twit.tv. And then you can also find the show page at twit.tv slash HOA. There you can find the ways to subscribe to this show as well as jump out to YouTube and subscribe there. Thanks so much to John Ashley for editing this together. And thanks to you for watching and listening each and every week. We'll see you next time on Hands on Android. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I am Ant Pruitt, host at Twit TV. Got a question for you. 
Have you gotten tired of how bad your photos are looking every time you post them to Instagram? Better yet, have you gotten yourself a new camera and you can't quite figure out why the images just don't look that good? Well, I have a solution for you. This is my show, Hands On Photography. Each and every Thursday, I sit down and share different tips and tricks that are going to help make you a better photographer and a better post processor. So subscribe today at twit.tv hop to learn more. Yeah.